Today is going to be a great day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, the food for thought exploration station and your place in making today better than yesterday. Did I freak you out with that intro? That was a little loud. Sorry about that. Hello. Hi. What's up? What is going on? If you're new to The Lone Doctrine, one, I'm super grateful to have you here. And two, welcome. Every month we pick a topic and this month we've been exploring thoughtfulness. P.S. I've had a lot of coffee today. I want you to keep this question in mind today. What feels like love to you? Who or what makes you feel most loved? It may sound super cheesy and you might be thinking, is this some all we need is love out there podcast? Well, yes and no. Do we need love? Yes. Are there things in life that we love? Yes. Are there also inevitable challenges in life? Yes. Does sometimes life get super real? Yes. The point is, we can break down our happiest, most memorable moments, the anchors of our life to love. What we might not realize is that those moments came from a chain reaction of thoughtfulness, which resulted in a moment you loved or possibly fell in love with. Someone, something, certain choices from one person to the next, a moment that led you to one place to the other, your thoughts, other people's thoughts becoming thoughtfulness. When we step back and take into account what makes us feel loved, we have the perfect kickstart to being the example of thoughtfulness and making life better and better. Guess what? It's story time. Here's the power of powwow by Good Time Stories. One of the worst things that a person experiences throughout their lifetime are negative comments and hurtful words. They can be devastating. They can tear down an individual's self-esteem, sense of worth and confidence. It has been said that for every negative comment that is said to someone, that person would need seven positive remarks to offset that one negative comment. It has been proven that when a person is given encouragement and reassuring words, they perform better in their workplace, become happier, and have a deeper sense of value and importance. Consider this. How much better would people feel and act if positive and heartening words were the norm instead of the common everyday negativity? Take, for example, the following African tribe. In this tribe, when someone does something wrong, they take the person to the center of the village where the entire tribe surrounds the individual and for two days say all the good things that that person has done in their life. The tribe believes that each person is good, but sometimes people make mistakes, which are really a cry for help. They unite to reconnect with them and give them their good nature. What a beautiful demonstration of a community's love and concern for their own. Again, I ask, shouldn't we try to emulate this kind of behavior towards our family and friends every day or when it's needed? So let me share a little story by Good Time Stories. As some of you know, I am a teacher and a sports coach. A few years ago, one of my teams was going through a tough stretch. There was a lot of fighting, accusations, and ill will between team members. Something had to be done. So I came up with a plan. The idea was called powwow, mainly because I used to really like the idea of the Native American Indians spending their time together in their teepees, fellowshipping, and sharing their thoughts and concerns with others. The powwow consisted of all my players sitting in a circle, myself included, with one of the individuals holding a ball. The person with the ball in their possession was not allowed to speak. One by one, each of the players would share constructive criticism with their teammate. Negative personal comments were not allowed. Once every player holds the ball, the process starts over again. This time, nothing but encouraging, reassuring, and emboldening comments are shared. The beautiful result was that when the players left the powwow, there was a noticeably higher level of confidence, camaraderie, and team spirit which continued until the end of the season. Those positive and motivating words healed a broken team and helped drive the team to a successful season. 
I have used this powwow method a few times during my 32 years of coaching, and it has always led to fantastic results, all because of positive and uplifting words. Thus, the power of the powwow. Remember, one kind word can change a person's entire life. So how will you set out to win this game of life? What is your powwow? It could be something you put into action with your family, your friends at work, or sometimes even with your community. We are the change each and every day, and our thoughts give great energy to the betterment of all our lives. I'll leave you with this great quote. No one has ever become poor by giving by Anne Frank. If you found value in the Lone Doctrine, we would be so grateful for your support. We've partnered up with Patreon, which is a place where you can help us stay on air and keep our doors open in supporting our listeners in making today better than yesterday. Thank you for your consideration, your support, and a very special thank you to our current Patreons who make the Lone Doctrine possible. We hope to see you at patreon.com slash lone doctrine, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash lone doctrine. I genuinely appreciate your consideration. A simple $1 a month as a Patreon will go a long way in helping us serve you and all our listeners, but don't take our word for it. Check out the testimonials and all the other goodies at lone doctrine.com and also Over on iTunes, we'd love hearing from you. When you leave a review, it helps others in need find us in the search engines. So if we could just have a couple minutes of your time, your comment could go a long way in helping others. Together, we make today better than yesterday. Thank you all for your support. A special, special thank you to our current Patreons. And remember, keep fighting the good fight. It's up.